Right, hi guys. Um, I'm hoping to photograph short-eared owls today. They're a fantastic subject, um, and the great thing about short-eared owls, as opposed to some of the other owl species, they come out earlier in the day, so uh, they'll sort of start hunting any time from one o'clock onwards here. Now, it's about three o'clock now because they've been coming out a little bit later this year, but I'm hoping uh, to uh, get short-eared owls hunting over the back. And what we've got over the back there is uh, some really rough, uh, grassland so it gives a really nice habitat for voles and, and mice and other small rodents and that's what the short-eared owls normally feed on so hopefully they'll be quartering that field and uh, we'll get some great shots the Sun is low in the sky and I think you can see on this uh, this little piece now I've got some really low lovely directional sunlight and the Sun's over there shining this way so i've come here so that i can hopefully get some really nice light uh, on the owls if i was shooting from that end i'd be shooting into the sun and the owls would be sort of silhouetted and uh, the light will be really contrasty so what i want is the sun sort of off my shoulder not necessarily straight onto the owls but coming and shining onto their faces so we get a little catch light in the eye and the light at this time of day is going to make their sort of plumage really glow because short-eared owls are sort of brown and white really sort of a mottled effect and in really good light they look absolutely fantastic and this lovely warm evening or late afternoon sunlight is really going to make them work and um, the other thing is as well this is a great time of year to photograph short-eared owls because it's sort of early winter and we get lots of short-eared owls coming from uh, from Europe and they come in winter in the UK so our numbers go right up and uh, on this site here uh, there was the other day about seven short-eared owls and what generally happens I think is you get a lot a big influx first of all then they work out who's the toughest basically and then some of them will stay on this site others will move on and that way sort of obviously the food source lasts throughout the winter hopefully for them that's all good I'm so looking forward to this fingers crossed that they turn up this is wildlife so again I might have to come in more than once I might strike out today hopefully not uh, over the back there we've got the sea wall because this reserve is fantastic it's um, one of these sort of wetland re, um, reclaiming sites in other words they've broken the sea wall in places and let the sea water come in so you've got this old farmland that's um, they're letting it sort of grow wild and rough so we get lots of rodent, rodents and, and other stuff. And there's also scrapes and stuff for water birds. Uh, so it's, it's a great area uh, and um, it's one of those uh, areas in, in Essex that I think is going to be a great site for all sorts of wildlife. I've already seen a, a brown hare, um, not close enough to photograph or I, w I wasn't quick enough setting up. It was as I was walking up here. Um, but my main subject today is the short eared owl. So I really hope I see that. Seen a kestrel over in the distance. Um, and again, I've seen pictures of uh, kestrels and short eared owls together, uh, sort of having a little bit of an argument. So you never know, we might see that as well. I've got my 600 mil lens because I'm guessing that they're not going to be that close. Um, and I've also got one 1.4 converter uh, in my pocket. So if I need a little bit more reach, I can put that on and I can change this 600 mil into an 840 mil. And it's on my crop sensor D500. So that gives me a bit more reach. So even if these uh, birds are quite distant, I'm going to get some good shots, especially in this light. Um, I'm on, um, at the moment, F5.6. Uh, so I get a nice fast shutter speed. Um, but I've got plenty of light at the moment as well. As the light drops, I may well open up the aperture to f4, which is this lens's maximum aperture. Um, and as the light levels drop, obviously I'll push the ISO up. But at the moment, I'm getting a, a, a 1250th of a second at ISO 200 f5.6. So everything is great. All I need is a subject now. So I'm going to spend the whole rest of the afternoon, which is not that long because it'll be dark around about half four. But I'm going to wait until dusk and hopefully these guys are going to turn up and we'll get some cracking shots. So I think that's probably about it for now. Um, yeah, I'll speak to you soon, guys. Just seen just seen a shorted owl in the distance. It's too far away to photograph at the moment, but it's promising. The light's going, that's the only thing. It always seems to be the way sometimes. You get the subject and the light's gone, or you've got the light and you haven't got your subject. But fingers crossed, I still think um, if it comes over this way, there's enough light to get some pictures. I have got some shots of some kestrel, of a, a kestrel, which is great, hovering literally just over that way. So all is not lost. If I don't get the short-eared elves today, I'll, I will be coming back. But I've got a kestrel, which is always nice, and they're there, just in the distance. So fingers crossed, I'm just hoping they come a bit closer. But it's no point in trying to chase these things. They move way too quickly for us. So all you can do is pick your spot and just wait for them to come within range and that's what I'm hoping they're gonna do so uh, I'm gonna shut up now and uh, get my fingers crossed and keep watching
with that. I'll speak to you soon. Right, hi all, so this is um, day two of trying to photograph short-eared owls. So yesterday afternoon, um, I did see the short-eared owls, but they were really distant. Uh, but I did get some nice kestrel pictures, uh, which um, hopefully you've um, already had a look at on this vlog. Um, so again, I'm going to spend the afternoon here, fingers crossed. Um, the light's not quite as golden as it was yesterday, um, but I've still got soft sunlight coming through the cloud because it's very light cloud. So light and wise, I think we're going to be okay. Again, it's like one of those things, just going to be in the lap of the gods, really. Um, hopefully the short-eared owls will turn up and they'll be nice and close or close enough to photograph this afternoon. You just cannot tell. Um, I've got one more afternoon that I can spare on short-eared owls, so I, if I don't get them today, I'm going to probably pop back tomorrow as well. And again, fingers crossed, um, with wildlife you just cannot predict what's going to happen. I know they're here at this site, I've actually seen them, I saw them yesterday, but just not close enough to photograph. And um, as I say, you can't chase the animals, you've just got to pick your spot. Um, and and hope for the best and as i say i know that they're quartering this this field over here so uh there's every possibility that they'll be here this afternoon but there's also by the same token there's every possibility that they might be elsewhere looking for food so fingers crossed you know um it's still lovely to be out um as i say i got some kestrel pictures yesterday so that's a bonus uh, so we'll see what happens um so i think that's about it for now i'm just going to uh concentrate keep scanning the skies uh, and I'm roughly on the same setup, set up, um, aperture, shutter, ISO that I was yesterday. I might have to push up the ISO a little bit because the light is slightly softer uh, than it was yesterday. Um, but aside from that, um, it's as it was yesterday really. Just patience game. With wildlife you've got to have bags and bags and bags of patience. You just cannot predict what's going to happen. Um, I think I've mentioned this so many times before but it's not like landscape photography where you know where your location is you can predict the weather uh, and go when the weather's right and the right time of day and the right time of year with wildlife you just can't predict it so you have to be super super patient but anyway fingers crossed and uh, if I get some short eared owls I'll put them on the end of this vlog um, if I don't get them today maybe I'll get them tomorrow uh, all I can say is again fingers crossed and we'll see what happens Hi guys, so this is day three of the short-eared owl hunt. Uh, yesterday afternoon I was there until about dusk and uh, struck out again. Um, I did see um, the short-eared owls but again they were just too far to photograph, too far in the distance. So I'm coming, this is day number three as I say and I'm going to give it another go. Fingers crossed. Um, as I say they're here but I just can't seem to get them close enough. Um, I've already photographed a hen harrier which was really nice. Again. Not super close, but I think I've got a couple of shots of that, and uh, they're quite rare hen harriers, so that's a bonus. 
So even if I don't get short eared hours this afternoon, I've got something. And I literally got that as I pulled up. I'm in a slightly different part of the reserve here um, because um, I think this is probably um, where they've been seen a little bit more. So I'm going to try and uh, try a different spot and see if that improves my chances. So it's literally, again, fingers crossed. I really hope I get them today. If not, I've got other stuff to do and I think I'll probably have to um, just you know take it on the chin and uh, accept that I, I didn't get any shots uh, at this particular site uh, I've got short eared owl pictures though um, so if I don't get any short eared owl shots this afternoon I'll put some shots on a short eared owls at the end of this vlog um, ones I've taken at a different sort of location at a previous sort of time um, and I've got some really nice short eared shots already but I'd love to get some today as well um, so that's about it um, I hope you've enjoyed this vlog it's um not exactly what I expected. I was hoping to get here, get some great shots, do a vlog and show you those shots and a little bit of video footage and all that sort of stuff. But that's wildlife. You never know when it's going to turn up or not. Uh, and uh, I think, you know, it's that persistence you need to get any sort of wildlife shot. So this is my third attempt. Fingers crossed I get some short, short ears or some shorties. If I don't, I'm going to put some pictures up, as I say, at the end of the vlog so um, that I shot previous times. Uh, wildlife photography is not easy. It takes a lot of persistence, but it is good fun. When you get the shot and you put all this time and effort in, it's fantastic when you actually nail it and uh, the animals turn up and you get some great pictures in good light. Uh, today the light's not bad, uh, muted sunlight, which is good. Um, yeah, it's all good. So fingers crossed and uh, I'll speak to you soon, guys. Uh, if you have enjoyed this vlog, and you haven't already uh, subscribed to my channel if you can consider subscribing that would be great and if you do press a little bell icon so you're notified when my next uh, video is uploaded uh, and also if you can like and share it that always helps so thanks very much uh, for watching guys and uh, I will speak to you soon hopefully um, once I've got some short in our shots